Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of solid part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 10 before going ahead with part 11. Let's now study the third type of modulus of elasticity that is the bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is the ratio of hydraulic stress to the corresponding hydraulic strain. So now if you see that we have got three types of modulus of elasticity for the three corresponding types of stress and strain. So even in the case of bulk modulus, it is generally denoted by capital B. So we can say that B is equal to minus P divided by delta V by delta by V. What is this? This is nothing but this is hydraulic stress. As I already, as we already mentioned while we were discussing hydraulic stress, that it is nothing but hydraulic pressure, hydraulic stress is equal to hydraulic pressure in magnitude. So we can write it as P and what is hydraulic strain? That is the change in volume divided by volume. It is also known as the volumetric strain. Now if you see there is a negative sign here. What does this negative sign indicate? This negative sign shows that an increase in pressure increase in pressure results in decrease in volume. So the negative sign shows that an increase in pressure results in a decrease in volume. The SI unit of bulk, bulk modulus is again Newton per meter square or Pascal because it is force per unit area. So this will be Newton per meter square because the strain again is unitless. It is observed that bulk modulus is greater for solids. It is the greatest for solids and then for liquids and it is the least for gases. So the value of bulk modulus is the greatest in solids and it is the least in gases. When we talk of bulk modulus, it is very important to introduce the term compressibility. What is compressibility? As the name suggests, what, what do you think of when, when I say compressibility? Compressibility means to what extent can you compress a substance, whether it is a solid, liquid or gas, to what extent can you compress it? So how much compressible the material is? So that is basically denoted by compressibility. Compressibility is nothing but the reciprocal of bulk modulus. Reciprocal of bulk modulus is termed as compressibility. It is denoted by small k and it is given by k is equal to 1 by bulk modulus that is equal to minus 1 by p into delta v by v. So this is the compressibility. So since we saw that bulk modulus is maximum for solids, since compressibility is the reciprocal of bulk modulus, so compressibility is the least for solids, then for liquids and then for gases. So you can see, you can, you can think of it in real life also. It is very easy to compress gases, right? You would have seen that it is easier to compress a gas when compared to a solid. That is because the compressibility of solid is very less. It is very difficult to compress a solid. So that's all about bulk modulus. Now let us go ahead and look at few problems on bulk modulus. Here comes the first problem. It states the bulk modulus for water is 2.1 gigapascal. Calculate the contraction in volume of 200 milliliter of water when subjected to a pressure of 2 megapascal. So we have to calculate the contraction in volume. That means we have to calculate the value of delta V. Now what are the values that are given here? Bulk modulus that is capital B is given as 2.1 gigapascal. Now what is gigapascal? 1 gigapascal is equal to 10 to the power 9 pascals. So these are basically higher units. So 10 to the power 9 pascals. What else is given? Volume of 200 milliliter of water. That means the initial volume V was 200 milliliter and uh, pressure is given as 2 mega pascal so 
1 megapascal is 10 to the power 6 pascals. So this will be 2 into 10 to the power 6 pascals. This milliliter also we got to convert it into meter cube. We know that 1 liter is equal to 1000 centimeter cube. Right? We already know this relation. So using this relation, so using this we can say that 1 milliliter is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube. Now using this relation we can say that it is 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube. Now using these given values we can find out the value of delta V. Now we know that from definition of bulk modulus we know that bulk modulus is T into that is pressure divided by delta V by V. This is bulk modulus. So from this we can say that delta V is equal to T into V divided by bulk modulus. So we can put the values as 2 into 10 to the power 6 into volume is 200 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by bulk modulus that is 2.1 into 10 to the power 9. So this comes out to be 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter cube. So this can be written as 0 0.19 milliliter. So this will be the contraction in volume. So we did nothing. We simply used the formula for bulk modulus and replaced the values with correct units. So you should also have some basic knowledge on the con unit conversion so that you don't get confused while converting units. Right? So you should have this basic knowledge on unit conversion. Like how, how is giga pascal related to pascal? How is mega pascal related to pascal? How do you convert liter to meter cube? Or what is the relation between liter and centimeter cube and things like that. Now let us go ahead and look at the second problem. The second problem says the average depth of Indian Ocean is about 3000 meters. Calculate the fractional compression delta V by V of water at the bottom of the ocean given that the bulk modulus of water is 2.2 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. Here we have to take G as 10 to the 10 meter per second square. So what are the values that is given? Height is given as 3000 meter. That is the depth of the Indian Ocean. Also the density of water. We know that density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. This is a universal value. So you should know all these values. So we have to calculate the fractional compression. That is delta V by V is what we need to calculate. Now we know that bulk modulus is equal to hydraulic stress which is nothing but pressure divided by the hydraulic strain that is delta V by V. So what we have to calculate? We have to calculate delta V by V. So this will be equal to pressure divided by bulk modulus. So if we know the value of pressure, if we can calculate the value of pressure since bulk modulus of any material, bulk modulus of water is already given. So if we can calculate the value of this pressure, we can get the value of delta V by V. So how can we calculate pressure at a certain height? Pressure at any certain height is given by H rho G. Right? This is from which law? This comes from the Pascal's principle related to fluids. So we say that pressure at any height H is given by H rho G. At any height H from the sea level. So the height from the sea level is 3000 meter. So we can say it is 3000 into rho that is density is 1000 and G is 10. So this comes out to be 3 into 10 to the power minus 7 kg meter inverse second to the power minus 2. So this is the value of pressure T. Therefore, the fractional compression that is delta V by V will be equal to this pressure P that is 3 into 10 to the power 7 divided by the bulk modulus which is 2.2 into 10 to the power 9. 
So this comes out to be 1.36 into 10 to the power minus 2. So this comes out to be 1.36%. So when we have to calculate the percentage, what we do? To calculate the percentage, we just multiply it by 100%. So we get 1.36%. So this would be your answer. Right, so we did nothing again, we used the same formula, just that in this case we had to calculate the value of pressure. So we used the formula for pressure which is H rho G and then we calculated the fractional change in volume. Let us again go ahead and... Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.